Hey kiddos, it's Friday, which means it's normally um, enrichment day at school, but since we're not at school, here's what I wanna challenge you to do. I want you to do one thing that's something like arts or crafts. So draw a picture or a painting or make something like you're in art class with Miss Leach. I want you to sing a song or make up a song or listen to your favorite song um, like you're in music class. I want you to play a game or go outside like you might do in PE. And then I want you to either do something on the computer or read a book maybe to your little brother or sister um, like you might do in the library or in computer. All right, now here's what you're really here for. You're here for chapter number 14. This chapter is called The Rat's Warning. Ooh. It says, dragging a ship through the sea is very hard work, and after two or three hours, the swallows began to get tired in the wings and short of breath. Then they sent a message down to the doctor to say that they would have to take a rest soon, and that they would pull the boat over to an island not far off and hide it in a deep bay till they had gotten breath enough to go on. If you're with your mom or dad or your grandma or grandpa, ask them to look up a picture of what a bay looks like. This is one of our landforms that we learned about. And presently the doctor saw the island they had spoken of. It had a very beautiful high green mountain in the middle of it. And when the ship had sailed safely into the bay where it could not be seen from the open sea, the doctor said he would get off onto the island to look for water because there was none left to drink on his ship. And he told all the animals to get out too and romp on the grass to stretch out their legs. And as they were getting off, the doctor noticed that a whole lot of rats were coming up from downstairs and leaving the ship as, um, as well. At that time, Jip started to run after them because chasing rats had, al had always been his favorite game. But the doctor quickly told him to stop. And one big black rat who seemed to want to say something to the doctor now crept forward timidly, which means shyly, um, on the rail and watched the dog out of the corner of his eye. And after he had coughed nervously two or three times <clears throat> and cleaned his whiskers and wiped his mouth, he said, ahem, you know, of course, that all ships have rats in them, doctor, do you not? And the doctor said, yes. And you have heard that rats always leave a sinking ship. Yes, said the doctor, so I've been told. People said the rat always speak of it with a sneer, like <laughs> whatever as though it were something disgraceful, but you can't blame us, can you? After all, who would stay on a sinking ship if he could get off of it? It's very natural, said the doctor, very natural. I quite understand. Was there, was there anything else you wished to say? Yes, said the rat. I've come to tell you we are leaving this ship, but we wanted to warn you before you go. This is a bad ship you have here. It isn't safe. The sides aren't strong enough. The boards are rotten, and before tomorrow night, it will sink to the bottom of the sea. But how do you know? asked the doctor. We always know, answered the rat. The tips of our tails get that tingly feeling like when your foot's asleep. This morning at six o'clock while I was getting breakfast, my tail suddenly began to tingle. Uh, so I went and asked my aunt how she felt. I'm sure you remember her, the long rat who was rather skinny and came to see you in Puddleby last spring. Well, she said that her tail was tingling just as bad. Then we knew for sure that this boat was going to sink in less than two days, and we all made up our minds to leave it as soon as we got near enough to any land. It's a bad ship, doctor. Don't sail in it any more, or you'll be surely drowned. Um, and goodbye to you. We are now going to look for a good place to live on this island. Oh, well, goodbye, said the doctor, and thank you very much for coming to tell me. That's very considerate of you. I... I hope you'll say hi to your aunt for me. I remember her perfectly. Leave that rat all by itself. Jip, come here, lie down. So then the doctor and all his animals went off carrying pails, so that's another word for a bucket, and pans to look for water on the island while the birds took their rest. I wonder what is the name of this island, said the doctor as he was climbing up the mountainside. It seems a very pleasant place. What a lot of birds there are. Why, these are the Canary Islands, said Dab-Dab. Don't you hear them singing? The doctor stopped and listened. Why, to be sure, of course, he said. How silly of me. I wonder if they can tell us where to find water. 
and presently the canaries, who had heard all about Dr. Doolittle from the birds that had flown by, came and led him to a beautiful spring of cool, clear water well, um, uh, where the canaries used to take their bath, and they showed him lovely meadows where the bird seed grew and all the other sights of their island. And the push me pull you was glad they had come because he liked the green grass so much better than the dried apples he had been eating on the ship. And Gub Gub squeaked for joy when he found a whole valley full of sugar cane. A little while later, when they had all had plenty to eat and drink and were lying on their backs while the canaries sang to them, two of the swallows came hurrying up. They were very flustered and excited. Doctor, they cried, the pirates have come into the bay, and they've all gotten onto your ship. They are downstairs looking for things to steal. They have left their own ship with nobody on it. If you hurry and come down to the shore, you can get onto their ship, which is very fast, and you can escape, but you'll have to hurry. That's a good idea, said the doctor. Splendid. Do you really think it's a good idea to steal someone else's ship? Probably not, right? But we're not the ones that wrote this story. The man who wrote this story, his name is Hugh Lofting, and he wrote it a very long time ago. But we know stealing is not right. And he called his animals together at once, said goodbye to the canaries, and, and he ran down to the beach. And when they reached and when they reached the shore, they saw the pirate ship with the three red sails standing in the water, and just as the swallows had said, there was nobody on it. All the pirates were downstairs in the doctor's ship looking for things to steal. So John Doolittle told his animals to walk very softly, and they all crept onto the ship. Do you think that they're going to get caught? I wonder if they're going to get caught for stealing the pirate ship. I would not want to take a ship from pirates. I feel like that would not be a very smart idea. All right, guys, so tomorrow is Saturday, and then we have Sunday. So just like when we're at school, you won't have videos tomorrow or Sunday. But on Monday, I will send your parents a dojo reminding them to come back and check for more videos because you'll get to hear Chapter 15. I'm also going to be um, over the weekend reading and recording some different uh, picture books for you guys um, so that you can have those to listen to as well. Oh, there's one thing I forgot. There was a picture in this chapter. We can't forget our pictures. There's our picture of Dr. Doolittle talking to the rats. There's all the birds. All right, guys, I love you so much, and I miss you, and I can't wait till we're back together again, and I hope you have a great, great weekend.